Things come at you very quickly. Hi, good morning. Boy, that mic is definitely on. <laughs> I can hear it loud and clear. No. Hey, Governor, how are you? Yeah, Are we waiting on, we should wait for the Senate President in a few minutes? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. looking forward to Thanksgiving? Yes. yes. <laughs> Who's driving on Wednesday? Class mm -hmm. Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be in an automobile on Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's next week. That was fast. I know, I know. I mean, Got I here like, wow, yeah. One week. I keep thinking that because of all the work from home stuff that the traffic is still all on Wednesday morning. It's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <Some level. laughs> Okay. Yeah, we have class on Wednesday, so it'll be interesting. Oh, the day before? Oh, it's on Thursday. Oh, yeah, no clinical Thursday, thank goodness. I'll be home meeting her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my nana's going to come. She comes. I do the pie, but she does the turkey. I burned one. Yeah. Okay. The whole thing. Yeah. No, this way. Uh, I don't know what the. Um, I don't believe I'm looking at it. Superintendents, too. <laughs> Superintendents. The superintendent. There we go. Todd. Okay, so I think she's just starting. Are you going so first, Bob? Corner. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> After that, it'll all flow. <clears throat> For some reason, I think it is. It's true. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> My wife gave me a call, so uh, I apologize for my voice. Uh, but why don't we? I, I don't know if you wanted to wait until the yeah. Senate President came. I, don't know we can. I think I think by the time we get done with the introductions, yeah. she'll probably be here. But okay. I don't want to skimp on the time we have to hear from the kids. Very well, thank you. And, and so, so welcome and good, good, good morning. I guess it's still morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Tremblay, Superintendent of the Framingham Public Schools. It's a pleasure to welcome you here. Uh, certainly, uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, welcome to you, the, the Cabinet, all who are here this morning. Uh, when you arrived at the uh, location this morning, you came into our Welcome Center. This is the Framingham Public Schools Welcome Center. We're uh, quite a privilege to be sharing this space with Mass Bay Community College. Uh, Dr. Perdell to my left is an excellent partner with us in this space. So I hope you felt the welcoming uh, when you walked into the room to have our students who are here joining us from Mass Bay, also from Framingham High School, and uh, to have other leaders who are here. We very much in the city of Framingham view education as a pre-K-16 experience. Uh, president of Framingham State University, Dr. Nimi, Nimi, and I have been discussing this as well about envisioning what Framingham can be for education and how we can grow and partner together. And this city is an example of how we can have educational partnerships. So to the members of the school committee who are here, city council, uh, state representatives who are in the room, so many uh, folks to name, but all who are here, particularly our students, welcome to all of you. Uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Dr. Padell to give some opening remarks around the programs that we're here to talk about this morning, and, to, and, and then we'll turn it into other introductions from our students as well. So, Dr. Padell, I'll let you take it from here. All and right. once again, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and all who are here, welcome to Framingham Public Schools. Thank you. And thank you on behalf of Mass Bay Community College, and welcome. Uh, for our health science programs, this has been our temporary home for 33 years. <laughs> uh, but I invite you to, after you leave, put in your GPS the address 490 Franklin Street so that you drive by our new building that was supported by the Baker Plato Administration for Health Sciences, and you'll see it's uh, nearing completion. Uh, it'll open January 2024. You'll all that, was, um, that was in a parking lot, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And you're all invited to the ribbon cut. <laughs> Aww, thank you. Uh, today, we're discussing two transformational initiatives of the Baker Plato Administration. Uh, supported by the legislature, 
that are redefining ac accessibility to higher education. Both programs have had and will have, over time, an enormous impact on closing both racial equity gaps and workforce gaps. Early college first. Early college uh, is making college more accessible to low-income and first-generation students. By removing barriers between high school and college, early college is giving students a chance to earn significant numbers of college credits before high school graduation, making them more likely to attend college, and it saves them considerable money. Statewide, there's been a 15 percentage point increase in college attendance, with equal gains among students regardless of race, ethnicity, and economic uh, advantage or disadvantage. That's life-changing for students. Early college is having a similar impact on persistence in college. Here in Metro West, early college has been overseen by the Metro West College Planning Collaborative, or the CPC as we call it, run by Colleen Coffey, who is somewhere here, and her Where remarkable you, team, which is behind <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. The CPC is a joint effort of Mass Bay and Framingham State. Here's President Nimi. Uh, that works with Framingham Public Schools and other school districts, uh, the two institutions, Mass Bay and Framingham State, working hand in glove. Uh, in addition to uh, Framingham, early college is happening in Milford and, uh, <clears throat> who am I forgetting? Waltham, thank you. Uh, we started with 35 students. There is now 435 early college students in the Metro West area. 267 of whom are right now in college level courses. The others are on their way to or between college level courses. And we expect the number to double in the next two years. 44% of the students are English language learners. 71% are economically disadvantaged. 68% are first generation and 85% are BIPOC. So we're reaching the population for whom early college was intended. All scholars begin in the eighth grade and start taking their college level courses in the ninth grade in four different pathways, STEM, business, sociology, and criminal justice. So the classes include things like cultural anthropology, quantitative reasoning, introduction to biology, and many more. The students also, of course, receive wraparound services, <clears throat> including tutoring, wellness meetings, college readiness, and career exploration. Uh, our early college students have earned over 2,100 college credits, saving half a million dollars for their families. I'd like to speak for a moment about Mass Grant Plus, another astounding advance in opportunity for college uh, advancement for students in this area. In fiscal year 23, the program is expected to, to distribute $35 million among 16,000 students. Today, 284 of Mass Bay's part-time and full-time students are benefiting from Mass Grant Plus. Altogether, since Mass Grant Plus began in 2018, 1,312 Mass Bay students have benefited from it. Some of those students would not have been able to attend had it not been for Mass Grant Plus. Yeah. Others would have had to take out costly loans and pay them back over years. So. This has been an enormous increase in state financial aid, the most enormous increase uh, in decades, and it's making a profound difference for our students in their ability to come to college and stay in college. In addition to early college students who are here, we have some Mass Grant Plus students as well who can speak firsthand about the impact of these programs on their lives. Thank you, Dr. Podell. And so that seems a great segue to have our students share their narratives. So much of what we do and what we've talked about here is the logistical side of the house, how we find and support these programs logistically, financially, but the real narrative is lives in the work that you do and the experience that you've had as students. So uh, it, does someone want to lead off and introduce themselves? Yeah, Very um, well. I'll a, lead off. Welcome. So hello, everyone. My name is Melanie Sidin. Um, I'm currently attending Framingham High School. Um, I started the program on... Which program are you in? Metro West Scholars. No, no. Early college? Yeah, okay. early college. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I started the program in eighth grade, so it means that I've been in the program for about three years, going on to the, my fourth year. Um, and this program really gave me hope. Um, as a first-gen, low-income woman, going to college was never the plan. And I initially joined the program to get to know Boston a little more and meet new people. Um, and then when the program announced that they were giving college classes for college credits, I signed up 
quick. I'm telling you, I poured my heart out into any class that I've been given and that I've been told to take. Um, and now I'm here. I'm going to college. I have 37 credits right now. Um, and this program has really gave me um, all the hope that I've ever wanted. And now I'm learning all the expertise that I might be missing out on if I never joined the program. This program was literally like a rose in the middle of a dead garden. This program gave me hope, and that's what it's I've gotten. A, it's quite a visual. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Did you, did you join a pathway? Hi, Senate President. Yes, uh, I joined. Currently, I'm on the education pathway, but I've transferred onto the biotech program as well. So, when did you have to make the decision about the pathway? Because you you started this process in eighth grade. So normally, I feel like I decided by the time I was in ninth or middle of tenth grade, um, I decided that's what I wanted to do and. Because of this program, I actually do not do not know what I want to do now. Um, because <laughs> there's, so, there's the, so many options. There's so many options, so many opportunities that that they are giving that I'm literally confused. I don't know what I want to do. But I'm currently on the education pathway, but I'm also on the biotech program. That's fantastic. Yes. Hey, which schools did you end up getting credits from, and where did you get them? I've gotten credits from FSU and Mass Bay. Wow. Mm -hmm. And did you attend school? at FSU, Mass Bay, no, or did you attend them, or did you get those credits at school? I got them at school because we started this during COVID, so, you know, everything online, and we were trying to decide, like, what's going on, you know, everything, like, was kind of, like, weird. So, <laughs> um, Really? It was! <laughs> yeah, so weird. <laughs> yeah, so we started during COVID, so it was kind of like a weird mess, um, so... We know we haven't attended FSU yet or Mass Bay. In person. In person. Got of it. Course. Okay. Thirty-seven credits. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Melanie, thank you so much. Uh, it was indeed a weird time. Uh, it was. <laughs> so we uh, we echo that. I, I, I just want to acknowledge that Senate President Spilka, who's joined us at the head table. Thank you, Senate President, for joining us, and also Education Secretary Pizer, uh, who's to my right. I also wanted to make sure that you were properly introduced as well this thank morning. You. So thank you for being here with us and joining us. So we'll continue down. I guess I'm serving in the role of moderator here, but we'll just go right down the line, and I'm sure the, the questions will unfold all by themselves. So please. So hi. I hope everyone had a good morning. My name is Vitor. Uh, like I. I, feel, uh, I think I'm the only one here, but I, I got through the program at Fuller Middle School, from Fuller Middle School. When I went there, it was actually like not like that. It was like the old building. <laughs> <laughs> I, left, I left right as soon as they changed it. But this program, it's kind of giving me like, I was kind of like lost on what to do about college. And it gave me like really orientation because I had no orientation on what to, like, college looked like on the United States. or. How do we even approach it? Like, what does it look like? How do I get through it? What, like, what do I do? Because I'm, I'm also a first generation like Melanie. And I was like, I was kind of like very intimidated by it, like most people are. And they've given us like all the support we need, like any questions we have, they reach out to people. They've given us even like well, mental wellness classrooms or sessions where we were like, they were like talking to us like, oh, how do you deal with this? What's healthy, what's not? How do you talk politely to a teacher, like e email etiquette, all that kind of stuff we need for the classroom. They've given us like, like financial advice on how to like do, oh, to those of you that have income, work, like, wh like what do you do? do, how much do you spend, like advice on how to like pay for college so we don't have as much debt or no debt at all. And they're also working on the biotech pathway, so like a bunch of us maybe like go to college without any debt, so which is, that's really great. When did you start? <coughs> Eighth grade. And at Fuller, is that what you said? Yeah, Fuller Middle School. I just have to point out that when I was in middle school in Needham, I played Phil at Fuller Middle School in basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us a little bit about how many credits you've gotten so far. Uh, I think I've got 13 credits so far, 13 college credits, and going on to the I'm going on to the biotech pathway. And I did some classes like I'm doing bio, the intro to biology right now. We did some classes like he said, the anthropology one, cultural anthropology, sociology. We had, a, what's the other one I'm thinking of? What's it called? How many credits do you think you'll have by the time you graduate from high school? Graduate from high school? I imagine somewhere from like 20 to 
thirty. Okay. Can, can uh, someone on the college sorry. side give us a, some perspective on that? Like how, how much? How many credits? Is Thirty-seven. That adds up to a semester, half a semester. What am I thinking? Uh, a about? full-time student attending uh, Mass Bay would have fifteen credits in the semester, and would have sixty credits to get an associate's degree. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I was there. You're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> halfway there. You're yeah. more than halfway there. That is yeah. All right. Okay. That's like that. yep. uh, and then as you go through, any uh, internships as part of this experience? You're all getting it. Oh, we'll go right to the next. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that, too. So, hi, my name is Rico Pacino. I started Metro also in the in my eighth grade at Cameron Middle School. Now I'm in my junior year at Birmingham High School. And I joined this program because I was I was matured at a really young age, and this program is about exposing you to a lifestyle that many many people, many many high schoolers struggle with, and not even end up going to college. So this is a program that made me think about college not in a negative way. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> there's hope. There's help. And this um, program. It gave us access and the opportunity to college courses, professors, some of them are doctors. We got access to campuses like FSU. So were you um, going online too or were you going in person? In person during the summer. During and, COVID. And so you went to the campus? Yeah, I went, we went to Harvard. We went to the campus of Harvard, Framingham State University. The only one we didn't go to is Mass Bay. Okay. But like I was saying, we went to those campuses and these places and it's good because it exposes us to those places and it gives us the sense that you can make it there. It's not elite, you are elite, you are a scholar, you're getting all these college credits, so it's never like you will go to these places and you can attend Harvard. It's not, you know, you have the requirements and everything. And they make us create connections, like we went to the company Merge, and all of these connections, all of these things, they lead us to great opportunities. So when they finally let us go. So what did you do with the internship? So I had two internships. So I had one last summer. I worked with, um, at Framingham High, but I worked with Cameron Middle School students. And um, now I work at Fuller. I'm currently working at Fuller as a translate, translator on Wednesday and um, Monday I'm one of the helpers. Tuesday and Thursdays I work for the CPC for our aviation program. Wow. That's fantastic. Wow. How many credits do you have, Raquel? 21. <laughs> How many do you want to have by the time you graduate? Well, well, when if I keep going, because I'm also in the biotech program, I will graduate with 32 college credits. Wow, that's fantastic, There's Raquel. Thank you. Sorry, Raquel. Thank you very much for for sharing that. As I continue with the introductions on this side of the panel, I also want to acknowledge uh, Framingham State University President Dr. Nancy Nemi, uh, and also Commissioner uh, Ortega is joining us from the Department of Higher Education. Uh, Commissioner Riley from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education could not be with us this morning. It sends uh, sends his warmest regards to all. And with that, we'll uh, continue on, um, and then I'll introduce some more of the elected officials who are in the room. I'll continue with introductions in between these terrific narratives. So. I guess you'll, you're next by going down the line. Okay. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Rayon, and I joined the program in eighth grade at Cameron Middle School. And now at this point, I've been in the program for almost four years. And during the time, like during those four years, I think I have changed so much. And this program has helped me with learning about college, uh, college credits, everything, honestly. like. I've built such, so many people, I've met so many people, it's been amazing. And last, last spring of, uh, last spring before the summer, like, uh, I found out about the summer internship program being run by the CBC, and I decided that I wanted to join, because why not? I had nothing to do during the summer, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. So what did you do? I did the similar thing to Raquel, uh, I, we were at, Framingham High School, and we uh, we were kind of like, yeah, chaperones, I'd say. Yeah, chaperones for like the middle schoolers that were doing the program, like similar to us, but like it's, yeah, middle schoolers. So you're like a, an advisor, a, a peer advisor. Yes, peer advisor. I think that's. That's better than chaperone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really important piece. No, I agree. Right? It's huge. It's, it's great. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. You're making a big decision. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. who's helping you do that? Peers. Obviously, exactly. your peers and this collaborative, right? The collaborative 
is also educating you there. That's a really key takeaway for all of us today. Okay, so, and the summer uh, that I spent at the Framingham High School was great. I learned how to be a leader and have great leadership skills. And as well as that, I was able to gain a job at Cameron Middle School uh, for, uh, and run, like, kind of run or, like, yeah, uh, run the program, that after-school program there. And and likely next year, hopefully, I I can get another job, uh, like, related to, the, to that. And, yeah. And you I will. Think, yeah. Yes, you will. <laughs> yeah. How many That's grads great. you got? I have 24 right now. How many do you want by the time you graduate? Uh, assuming that I do maybe two two classes a semester, uh, probably, like, I don't know, like 40 maybe? I don't know. Wow. Whoa! Wow. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> I, I want to do two classes a semester, assuming. That's assuming that. Okay. Congratulations. Hey, thanks. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, um, Lucas. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a high schooler. I'm Lucas Messer. Um, 11th grade, like everyone else, I went to Cameron. Uh, the goal with this program, I was just trying to get ahead, like be advanced, you know, like I'm an athlete, so my goal is like I want to be a step ahead of everyone at all times. <laughs> uh, competitive advantage. Um, I have 19 credits right now. Goal is probably like mid 20s, you know. I want to get up there. Um, I'm a like I'm a businessman, you know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be an entrepreneur. I'm trying to make a good amount of money. Um, and I'm doing the uh, marketing uh, class right now, and it's I'm enjoying it. So. Where's the marketing class? Which school? Um, it's yeah, it's at FHS. This is the first year we're doing it. Uh, we have uh, we have a bunch of classes designated in uh, the school, and I actually uh, help out with the class. We had um, our classes now doing very well. We um, so like I stay in there, help tutor and enjoy it because you know the best way to learn something is to be able to teach it. So, you know. so is FHS. When you say you take it at FHS, is it taught by FHS people or is it taught by folks it's taught, from it's taught by the, the colleges? Yeah, okay. he comes in. Um, so he comes in Mondays and Wednesdays. And where's he coming he from? He teaches. I'm um, pretty sure he's at Mass Bay. Yeah, is he Mass, Mass Bay. Bay. Okay. Yeah, so he comes from Mass Bay. Uh, just hangs out with us, teaches us, um, and then gives us some tests, gives us projects. But <laughs> we watch a lot of videos. You know? yeah, it's it's like a normal college class. Just he's. That's cool. And what um, what sport do you play? I play baseball. Big baseball guy. Yeah. That's a lot. You know, every one of you: confidence, <coughs> leadership, direction, focus. You're balancing a lot of stuff. And to say two credit, two courses on top of sports activities, your coursework that you need as part of the core curriculum to graduate from high school, is amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lucas, for your, for your um, uh, narrative this morning, for sharing that with us. I wanted to just pause before we get to the next group for our Mass Grant uh, students, Mass Grant Plus students, just to acknowledge other folks who are in the House. Um, uh, I see Representative uh, Carmen Gentile. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mayor Sosinski is with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, Southern City Council members, uh, Ms. Liam, Br Liam Bruno is with us, of course. Nice to see you here. <laughs> oh. Councilor Ottaviani is in the back of the room. Uh, thank you for joining us as, as well this morning. Uh, maybe just a wave of uh, the uh, school committee. I see the school committee chair, uh, Ms. Sousa. But all the members of the school committee, if you'd just uh, be so kind to wave, give us a wave. Thank you all for being here this morning. We have a nine-member committee, ten with the uh, mayor. Uh, thank you for being out uh, this morning. And also, I, uh, I want to give a, a huge acknowledgement for the Framingham Public Schools team, the central office team, and all those folks who make the work happen. So please raise your hands, too. Yeah. Yeah, don't be shy. Lincoln Lynch is the, the tall guy in the back. He's executive director of finance and operations. Not only is, does he run the finances for the district, he drove the van to get the students here this morning <laughs> from the high school. So this is a utility team. So thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, with that being said, we'll turn it over to, um, to our students, the Mass Grant Plus student participants, to, uh, to share your stories. And thank you for being with us this morning as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Francesco Viscomi. I'm uh, one of the Mass Grant uh, recipients. Um, first of all, thank you for all being here and taking your time to have this conversation. And um, to all the other college students, um, you guys are setting yourself up for something great, especially at the collegiate level. Binging all your coursework and um, the whole load is amazing. It's seriously a great opportunity for you guys. Um, 
As far as the mass grant goes, it helped me um, personally. Um, it motivated me to stay in, in school. A big concern I had this semester specifically was finding funding for school because I pay everything out of pocket. Um, so the funding encouraged me to stick with my classes. Is this school? Where'd you go to high school? What is it? Where'd you go to high school? Waltham High. Waltham. Okay. Yes. And are you, do you live in Waltham now? Yes. Okay. Yep. And where are you going? I'm at Mass Bay. Okay. And were you part of this early college as well? No. That, no. Okay, so you're just all on the other side. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's nice to have different perspectives. <laughs> um, but the Mass Grant did help a lot. Um, I didn't want to sacrifice my education um, being in school. Um, I wanted to do as much as possible within the semester. And I think that for a lot of kids that are able to be recipients of the Mass Grant or any financial aid, um, it also was a big um, boost in engagement for the school. Um, I happen to be part of the Student Government Association at Mass Bay, and a big thing we focus on is engagement. And this year, with a lot of financial aid being granted, um, helping everyone, we're able to see numbers go up and a lot of more student involvement. How do you think about taking a two-year degree and, and a, then moving into a four-year degree? And is that all part of the Commonwealth commitment, which is the MOU between community college and state university? But from a student's perspective, are you thinking along those lines? Yes, I would like to um, eventually transfer to a four-year. Um, I think for anyone that's choosing the path to go at a community college, especially Mass Bay, it's a great place to start. I think it sets you up for um, just a little bit of perspective of what it will be for the next um, years to follow. But everyone at Mass Bay really wants you to succeed, and they're all for giving you as much resource as possible. Okay. So I'm, sh I'm assuming the employers are all over, all over these kids, and maybe someone mm -hmm. will speak to how the the employers are engaging the students around work? Uh, yes, so um, a lot of classes that in this semester, um, and regardless of um, the business class I do take, they're always striving to connect you with different mentors and different opportunities to find work, especially internships, because I know it's a big internship season. So they're big advocates for making sure that you're able to apply what you've learned in school and then apply to outside um, and to work. That's great. What are you studying? Uh, accounting. Are you first generation to go to college? Yes. Thank you. So Thank you. some of the some of these folks talked about the benefit of um, having somebody you could talk to about financial aid and about um, sort of how to think about going to college and all the rest. Did did you get some of that at Waltham or did you get it some other place or did you not get it at all? Um, personally, for my family, um, it was hard to have that conversation. A lot of, of my family members um, didn't really make it past the high school education okay. level. A lot of them, of course, um, first gender immigrants. Yep. Um, so they did pick up courses after um, coming to America. But a lot of the conversations that I had to have was um, through different advisors um, within Waltham High. And okay. Also, a lot of it was on me to do my own searching of where I want to go, um, what field, and um, how the whole process works. But the counselors at Waltham were helpful? Yes. You know, you get a degree in accounting, you will never have to look for work. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm serious. That's true. Could I, could I just ask you, I mean, we put in the legislature $19 million for early college and mass grants. What more can we do to help, whether it be for early college? I mean, you're going through it right now. If somebody, if you had the chance to say, if you did this or if you did that, it would be a lot easier for me. What, what is that? I think a lot of kids are scared, to, students um, are scared to ask for help, and they're scared to ask questions because they might not seem um, plausible to be put, um, to ask um, for certain resources. But I think, for instance, I, I, in Waltham High, I did not hear about the early college program. I think making sure that people are advocating for open resources and um, early benefits is something that helps a lot. Thank you. I think also adding it in like during high school, like if people can still join during high school, because eighth grade, I'm like three years old. I don't know anything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, I, maybe if I like you weren't really eighth, three years old, <laughs> but <laughs> if, I, if I like if I didn't sign up in eighth grade, I would have still wanted to in like, right. sophomore year, freshman year. Yeah. Okay, so not don't close it off at all. Yeah. Thank you very much, Francisco. I wanted to also acknowledge, you mentioned Waltham. I was talking to my colleague, Dr. Brian Regan, the superintendent in Waltham, uh, just this morning about early college and ways that they're a little bit, uh, Framingham is a little two years more in, uh, into this four years, Waltham only two years in, so it's, uh, it's good advice that I'll share back. 
uh, with him as well. And on behalf of Dr. Kevin McIntyre in Milford, uh, sends his regards as well. And as we continue down the line to Amanda next, I also want to acknowledge um, the woman who put the glue together in all of this construction is Colleen Coffey, who's sitting right yes. here. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, Colleen, I'm sure that with the entire team. Uh, I don't work as much as closely with the rest of the team that Colleen does. So, Colleen, to you and to the entire team who are here who've made this happen on behalf of our students and for all that you've done, we thank you for that because it's been a lift with some of these uh, advances that you're talking about and some of the narrative. Behind some of that are some union challenges. Behind some of that are some, uh, some real sort of political challenges on, on the school side of the house. Uh, who's providing what education and who should be and who's getting the credit for it and who's giving the grade for it. And all of that is a complex mix um, to which we try to insulate you from. But the real work there and that Colleen and her team are clearly doing to make that happen and these great narratives come from that hard work behind the scenes. So thank you for putting that forward to us and for that, uh, for that great uh, uh, sharing with us this morning. So with that said, I'll turn it over to Amanda to provide some more insight into your programming experience. Um, so good morning or afternoon, what time it is We've, now? we've crossed over. It's All right, good afternoon. Um, so my name is Amanda LaRosi. I am a second year um, associate degree nursing student here at Mass Bay. So I will not get to be in the beautiful new building, but I will come and visit it. Um, so I am 31, um, so I'm a little bit older, but I took a little bit of a different path. Um, same, neither of my parents actually graduated even junior high. Um, same with my grandparents. And we and our family do things backwards. We all have babies young and then figure out what we're doing. So my grandmother was a single mom with two kids as a teenager. Got her GED, went and got her BSN. Um, my mom became an LPN um, when I was a kid and I saw how hard she worked. And that was such a big deal. Um, I had my son when I was 19, he has complex medical issues. Um, so he has cardiac conditions and some other stuff. Um, you know, and you kinda, I, I commend all of you because I cannot even imagine all that you're doing. Biotech, be a nurse, please. Um, but I went on and I became an LPN through ACIBET and I ended up here at Mass Bay to get my RN because, you know, limited roles with LPN sometimes. Um, I chose Mass Bay specifically because of all the resources that are offered here. We have food scholarships, we have um, counseling, we have all these different things that really, really help students here. Um, we also we have a really good group. We have really great professors. We go to clinical. Um, last week I got to help with a woman who was delivering her baby. So really hands-on sorts of things. Um, with the grant and things, as a nursing student, our costs are a little bit higher, unfortunately, just because of per credit or um, having to go to clinical, like travel costs, things like that, that you don't necessarily factor in. So with the amount that I got in the grant, that was able to pay my car payment for two months. So I didn't have to worry about that. Um, because being a mom or even just being a student, you know, we have to put our studies first. With nursing, it's nuts, lack of a better word. Um, and in my class specifically, so I'm class president and then I'm nursing students club president. So just last week we had the Framingham State University, uh, Dr. Mullaney. Mm -hmm. She came to speak about the RN to BSN program because so many of us want to go on and know the importance of that. Um, so to have Mass Bay and Framingham State joined like that is so helpful and I applied anticipatory for fall of 23. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really been great. Those grants are so helpful, especially for parents or people, you know, who have those backwards kinds of lives, like people in my family. So I really just thank you for that. How do you manage childcare? Oh, uh, day by day. You know, um, it's, you know, it is, it's day by day. Um, I'm lucky enough I have a lot of very good family. Um, but, you know, so my son is 12, he's gross. You know, <laughs> we were there a couple years ago, but it's, it's a gross age. Um, there's a lot of, I can't do that right now, but I gotta study. Um, that can come up with a lot of stuff for him. You know, he's used to mom, he's the only kid. But I try to look at it as what my mom showed me, what my grandmother was able to show my mom, I can do that for my son and it'll all be worth it. Um, there's sometimes, hey, you wanna learn about hypertension? Um, <laughs> I agree with like, you know, the best way to learn is sometimes to teach, so I tutor 
peers in my class. I tutor the freshmen. Um, I want to go on. I want to get my bachelor's. I want to get my master's, and I want to be a doctoral student um, with a special specialization. Now I'm getting all lost. But <laughs> nursing education, I would love to be a professor of nursing and pass so on. So you will come back to the new building as a professor. Yes. I could. Yes, I could. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Amanda, thanks so much. Kristen, we'll turn it over to you. You were the, one of the first to arrive this morning, early uh, here. It's <laughs> nice to see you at the table and joining us. Maybe tell us a little bit about your story. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kristen Morin. Um, I am in my final year of the business administration program, um, and I have at, to say that... Uh, Kristen, final year where? At uh, Mass Bay. Mass Bay, okay. um, And I have to say that uh, I never thought I would be here. And by that, I'm not just talking about being here, sitting at this table with all of you. I mean, graduating. Mm -hmm. I tried to go to school when I was 20 years old. And I couldn't afford it. How old are you now, Kristen? What's that? How old are you now? I'm 30. So you graduated high school, you started college, and you couldn't complete it. I couldn't that, afford it. Couldn't, couldn't, yeah. The cost of my books was more than what I made in a week at work. So. What were you pursuing at that time? Nursing. Okay. So to say that receiving this grant has helped me is an understatement. Mm -hmm. And I really can't thank you enough for creating it. So when, how, how much longer do you have to go? Did you say you're graduating soon? That's okay. We, we, we're all, we're very, we're very happy for you. We have you. a whole table full we of have, criers we're, <laughs> <laughs> And we're very proud of you. May, I graduate with my associates and. Right. Um, Because the grant has lifted so much of my financial burden, um, when I go to transfer, you know, they say to cast a wide net and throw some reach schools in there. I feel like because I don't have that financial burden weighing on me, my reach school BC is not going to be a reach because I've been able to focus on my studies and actually get good grades for the first time in my life. So thank you so much. That's great. Thank you, Kristen, for sharing and, and, and being so vulnerable this morning and sharing that really powerful story with us. Thank you. We're so proud of you. Uh, and I think we have another student. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have a placard, name placard at the table for you, but if you'd come up, um, why don't you come and take my seat right here and share your story? Jennifer Rahal. Um, I, after this semester, will be hopefully graduating after an internship, um, paralegal studies, um, getting my associate's degree, and my plan for next year is to apply to Framingham State um, to get my bachelor's. Um, outside of school, I am a single mom of three, so this Mass Grant Plus um, was a huge help, especially after the pandemic and all the financial burden. Um, I think this is a great help for me to be able to afford staying in school. Um, Cause that's something big for me is not taken away from my kids. So I'm very grateful to be at Mass Bay and all the opportunities I've had while here. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you. What made you decide to go back to Mass Bay? Um, so 10 years ago, I actually started at Mount Ida for criminal justice. I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and then I had my first son, um, my oldest. And I didn't think I was going to go back to school. But back in um, 2019, I became a single mom of three for the first time. So 
Um, at the time, I was unemployed and was like, there's no way I'm going back to school with three kids, but I decided to give it a shot. And I think the resources that they have here is just phenomenal. Like, um, Childcare program assistance, help with textbooks, the Mass Grant Plus, all of that has been able, um, has helped me to stay in school um, and not have to take away from my children or their needs. So, um, yes, now I'm going for paralegal because I felt like law school would be impossible, but we'll see in the future, maybe when my kids are a little bit older. It's not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much within reach. Is there an opportunity to do paralegal work? I mean, there's plenty of law firms around looking for people to do that. So I was actually just talking with some of the other students here. My, um, because of the pandemic, a lot of law firms are still virtual. Remote. Yeah, right. Um, Boston definitely has a lot of them, but I live around here in Framingham, so it's a big commute for me between the school day and I work two jobs outside of going to school. So I'm looking more in the western area. Yeah, yeah. And okay. that's has been very difficult, but um, Career Services at Mass Bay has linked me with networking platforms like Handshake and LinkedIn. Um, there's other professors that have uh, acquaintances that they have reached out to for me, so I definitely have had people reach out. It's just been a little difficult in the area that I want to work in. Yep, okay. But Boston definitely, yeah, they have a lot. Of opportunities, it's just the parking, the driving, commute. Not a big fan. So they won't let you. They won't let you work remote, even though a lot of their people are working remote. I think they. The problem is, is trying to train through a computer. Ah, good point. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask that question of the students, college students? Were any of your classes online? Because you're all working. Okay, so you still had that available to you to make it easier to access your education and work? Um, as nursing students, so our first, my first semester, fall of 21, was online just because of the guidelines. Um, but we are full-time, like, in person. Um, so we have class two days a week and clinical two days a week. So we go around to wherever your placement is for your hospital um, and then class on campus. Beyond, we're beyond pandemic now. Are classes online as well as just an offering for yes, students? Yes, I'm okay. actually taking all online classes because I picked up another job this semester, and it's been it's been great because I can work the two jobs and then do schoolwork at night, so it fits into a regular day. That's great. That's great. You have clinical, obviously, has yeah. to be in person. and our, so all our classes aspect. are all in person too. So we didn't have an online option for our courses themselves. Um, so you know, that can throw a, a little bit of a wrench in for some people, especially where we started remote, but, yeah. You want to say moderate? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And, and, and for sharing all these stories we represent across, as I mentioned in the opening remarks, pre-K-16. So this experience, everybody in this room values education and opportunities and the resilience we heard today, the willingness to, to take on those challenges despite what life puts in your way is really inspiring to all of us. And for those of us who are in the education world doing this every day, kind of being at the grind and saying, is it worth it today? Is it worth it? Today is an example of why it's worth it and why we need to continue doing this work, all of us in this room who support education at a variety of levels. And we're truly inspired by all the conversations we've had today across our grade levels and uh, as you inspire each other at the table and, in, and as you inspire us. So thank you for your courageousness and for being who you are and for giving yourselves and your families to see that improvement and that career ladder opportunity for yourselves. And all this is possible, of course, with the support of our Commonwealth. And so I'll turn it back to Lieutenant Governor, Governor, uh, for your remarks and your reflections, and just to echo that note of thanks on behalf of all of us in education who count on your support and what you do for the, for the students in our care. Thank you. I'll turn it back to you, Governor. Thank you. I'm, I'm Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and I'm so honored and happy to be here uh, with all of you, particularly the students, and in particular to say thank you to everyone who have worked so hard together in collaboration to solve through the complexities and the details of making these programs work 
uh, for you in the way that you have articulated today. Two couple things I'd like to say. First of all, and I mentioned this word, confidence. The confidence that I feel, I see and feel in each one of you in your presentations is, is really incredible. And that comes from a lot of support from others around you, but it comes from within and your ability to make that decision that you wanted to access these programs, your incredible hard work and commitment to getting through it and then finishing strong. So the two things I would say about the way these programs work, early college and innovation career pathways, that's your access point. And the fact that in eighth grade you are having conversations with your teachers and peers around these opportunities is a, is a, a big part of this process. And then to be able to work the way through those pathways and all the other challenges you have in that high school space, and then the solve on the back end to finishing. I was always worried we're going to plug in students to early college and innovation pathways, but we, we need them to finish. And I think that was one of the pieces I see today. Like if you you talked about not being able to finish at the age of 20. And so being able to plug in the resources at the back end through the scholarship program at the college level is critically important for you to not only access, work your way through, but to finish strong. So that, to me, I'm so grateful to really be able to see that all connected today. And I want to thank all of the partners. You know, putting down the whole idea of like who gets credit, who owns the student, like, and really owning it together so that this whole continuum can, can work. The other piece is, I would say most of you, I, I hope, will you'll graduate from the program into employment here in Massachusetts. You know, it's not a requirement, however, <laughs> it's a big part of why we are investing so much in you, uh, in your skills, in your degrees, so that then they can be deployed into a workplace here in Massachusetts, because we hear from so many employers that have positions and jobs, especially ones that are emerging and growing in our innovation economy that they just can't fill. There are just not enough people coming up through the system or coming into the system as a, a later learner, a more on, on, at your story level. So thank you, but we need all of these pathways and all of these connections to these skills, credentials, degrees in order for our economy to continue to perform. So congratulations to all of you for being a part of this. Uh, it wasn't required. Uh, it was all hard, and you all worked through it, and you have a lot to show for it. Congratulations to you. I don't have a lot to add. I just want to say thank you, first of all, uh, for coming and sharing your stories with us today. And, and I want to thank the phalanx of folks that are around you who've been part of your journeys. Um, the, the main point behind creating early college in the first place, and I want to thank the legislature for their work on funding it um, and expanding it, is uh, it was a way to give a lot of first generation kids um, an opportunity to sort of kick the tires on college, which for many of them would be not something they could talk about necessarily at home and to see if they could do the work. And our view all along was that we knew they could do the work. We just needed to give them an opportunity to do it in an environment that was comfortable for them and where they could get some of the sort of wraparound support that they would need to figure it out. And, um, and there's three things that make me hopeful about this program in addition to, the, to you, okay? The first is, um, the more kids who graduate from high school with a lot of college credits, the more confident they are about their ability to do it, the relationship they've established with college uh, professors and other college students, and the length of time it will take them to finish, and the fact that they've already blown through all the remedial stuff that they normally might have to take if they didn't start till they got there. That is absolutely positively going to enhance the likelihood that those kids will graduate. The second thing is it totally changes the burden for the colleges with respect in the Commonwealth to some extent 
with respect to what the cost of a college education is going to be for them, which makes it easier for people to double down on you. And number three is you have a relationship with a higher education institution. You've proven you can do the work. They are going to be more interested in pulling and rowing with you in the same direction because of that. I, you know, <clears throat> Senate President asked what more we can do on this. I won't be here, but I wish I was because I would like this program to be available in every school system in Massachusetts. I think, um, I think it's proven at this point. It's amazing to me that when we first kicked around this early college idea, one of the pushbacks we got about it was why should we give a whole bunch of kids in the suburbs another advantage, right? But the overwhelming participation in this program has been kids of color in cities. I mean, I'm guessing it's 75 to 80 percent of the student body that's participating in early college is kids from cities and kids of color. And, um, and the number of credits they're accruing and the impact that has on their ability to both prove to themselves and others they can do the work and also to help shorten the back end with respect to how long it takes to graduate, which gets back to your point, Kristen, is a really big deal. And, um, and I, I do hope this program continues to grow and expand going forward because um, I think for a lot of kids, it's a tremendous opportunity. And, what, and I would also argue for a lot of the schools, it's a tremendous opportunity, too, because um, the college-age population has dropped a lot over the course of the past 10 years. My, <clears throat> my oldest is 31. When he was applying to college, which is, at this point was, you know, 14 or 15 years ago, he was part of the largest cohort of kids that ever applied to college. Um, that number ever since then has just gone like this, and it's going to keep going like that, which means it's more important than ever that we do whatever we can to make sure that the kids who are in elementary and middle school and high school have access to the programs they need to ensure that they will be ready to run hard and run fast to get that higher education degree. And, and the other thing I would just say is um, you combine that with the Mass Grant Program and some of the other programs that people have worked on and developed over the course of the last few years, again, in conjunction with our colleagues in the legislature. And it's absolutely possible to say with a straight face that almost anybody, if they take advantage of this stuff, and I'm so glad a couple of you brought up the financial aid issue. I'm convinced that one of the things we do not do a good job of is helping kids figure out what the financial aid opportunities are. But if you get the right kind of guidance and support on that, you can absolutely graduate from college in Massachusetts without incurring debt. And um, we have not done a good job of helping people understand and figure that out. But it's absolutely there um, if you get the right kind of guidance and advice along the way. Um, I'm thoroughly pumped about this because this is th these programs are ones that meant a lot to us to kickstart and get going. And like I said, I really hope they grow as we go forward because they have the potential to change lives. And that's fundamentally what education at the end of the day is supposed to be all about. So thank you. With that, I will turn it over to the Senate President. Just, I think 50 early college programs out of close to 400 high schools. Yeah. So that's, but, that's but almost scale. all of them are located in okay. gateway cities. So almost all the kids who are going through these programs, for the most part, are kids of color who are first generation. And God bless you for being willing to take the shot. Yeah. Because, you know, you'll score a lot of goals you take shots like that, especially if you get some help. Go ahead. I, I just want to say when, when Lieutenant Governor talked about confidence that it was really wonderful to hear uh, all of your stories and all that you've been through and how you've persisted and, uh, you know, met with your families even though they may not have gone to college or even high school and uh, being willing to take a chance and learning that you could do it, you're being confident. I have to say, though, in hearing all of you, I literally get the goosebumps in hearing uh, all that you have gone through to get to where you are, especially <coughs> those with children <coughs> and families. And um, it's, it's really, from, from my perspective, 
made me feel so confident that we are in good hands with our future generation. I have to say, so your struggles, being persistent, be sticking through it, um, knowing that you will succeed in whatever you end up doing, thank you for coming back and trying again. Uh, that's, that's how we succeed. You know, you fall down, get up, try again, you learn from it and keep moving. Um, it's the best way to succeed, and uh, we are here in the legislature. I will be here next year, yes. and I look forward to it. And uh, this is one area where I, I want to thank also the Framingham Public Schools, Mass Bay, and Framingham State for having this beautiful <laughs> partnership that I think should be, you talk about role models and making sure other schools know about early college, other schools and other areas of the state should uh, replicate this partnership because it is so incredible and people work together and, and it, uh, just to make sure that the students here that enter either Framingham Public Schools or Mass Bay or Framingham State succeed, whatever can be done to succeed. So uh, my door is open for, for next year and beyond. Let me know what more we can do to help you succeed, whether it be uh, middle school, high school, uh, community college, university, we're here to help to make sure that you succeed with, with your dreams. Uh, uh, Secretary Pizer, thanks, Rob. Uh, so I'm Jim Pizer, Secretary of Education, and there's really not much to add uh, other than, again, to express my thanks to all of the students, both high school and college students who are here today, the stories are truly inspiring. Um, to thank our leaders, uh, both in the, at the K-12 level and the higher education level, because as the Senate President just mentioned, the, the, the partnership and the collaboration here in Framingham is really, uh, I don't want to say unique, it is distinctive. Uh, and it is a higher level than just about anywhere else. And that, uh, and that has been going on for a long time, and it's reflected in the outcomes that we're seeing. Um, the only other thing I want to say is, you know, the, the Senate President said or asked what more can we do. I, um, obviously money is always an issue here, but I think there are a, a few things that we can and should do to try to codify and institutionalize these programs so it's not sort of an annual uh, event to try to make sure that uh, we're moving them forward, that, to simplify the pathways and to communicate, communicate, communicate about the opportunities. The governor said the reality is the pieces are in place there to, to ensure that anyone who wants to go to college can go to college and can afford to do so, but we need to do a better job of communicating uh, that out. I do want to note that there are a couple people in the room, probably more, Bob LePage on my team, who's been very uh, essential to the early college program. Uh, and Kathy McCurdy, who, there she is, Dr. McCurdy, who's been in charge of our financial aid program. Um, they've just done a tremendous job, and uh, there's obviously more work to do, but uh, we've come a long way, and I'm really grateful for it. So thank you, Bob. Thank you, Secretary. Um, uh, be before we close out for the day, I also want to just turn it to, um, to President Nimi, uh, Secretary Ortega, if you had any final closing thoughts before we do. I think we'll have time for a group photo, too, before you leave, I hope. I, I don't know how you follow all of that. It's uh, everybody has spoken uh, truth and commitment and and uh, truth to uh, people who have the power to help make these dreams, your dreams, succeed. I, I loved hearing from all of you. We need to keep working on this. So you asked what you can do more, what we can do more of, and that is make the infrastructure and the architecture of these programs available to everybody so that we, as you said, don't have to keep coming back every year to figure out how this works, but to make it a reality so that it is a reality for everybody who wants to try. So I can't wait till you become a professor in our school. Uh, and all of you who, who I, 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 we want to see where you go. Uh, thank you for giving us that light. President Nimi and Superintendent, I just want to correct. I am the Commissioner of Higher Education. The Secretary is over there. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, you know, new to uh, uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts now in my third week here. But I want to make some observations and thank you for, for the revelation that you've sort of just given us, right? I echo the confidence, the self-esteem that each of you have. And I also want to emphasize the fact that that's the secret 
to getting through and moving on, but it has to be coupled with, I think, what some of you have mentioned, the idea of agency, like in the form of the mass grant that gives you a choice, that gives you an opportunity to pursue what it is that you want to pursue. And then put an emphasis on one thing that each of you have sort of revealed to us as well. There is no one path. There's a path that you carve out that's for you based on the circumstances that you have, right? And I think what's important is to acknowledge the fact is you're taking the steps in the right direction. You're going you're gonna to make it, you're going to succeed, and you're going to give back. I imagine a table very much like this in the future that's the inverse with you as the leaders promoting and promulgating the importance of these programs and making them what they need to be in the future. So thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for the opportunity. To thank you, Commissioner Ortega. And uh, to all those behind the scenes who made today possible, who came together on behalf of uh, President Padel and I, we thank you all for uh, making this possible today, for coming together and for celebrating our students and the great uh, futures that lie ahead. And with that said, I'll be keeping the, the governor on time, on schedule. So uh, if there's a group photograph, I'll also think to uh, let that happen now. Put us. All right. Put us. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Have a great afternoon.